this has been a long time coming. Up until I played Fugitive Hunter on the PS2, this game here was the worst game I had ever played in my life. I was probably no older than 7 or possibly 8 when I first played Dark Castle, and even then, at such a young age, I knew it was a piece of shit. But what really made it bad for me was the fact that it was released on my favorite console of all time, the Genesis. so you can relate. Anyway, as much as I would like to talk about the history of this game, I can't because it's not an original title. This is actually a port of a Mac game from 1986. Now, from what I've heard from those who have actually played it, the original version is good, and this is just a really fucked port. I don't know because I've never played it, so I'm gonna just assume that they're right. Well, let's put this in and see how bad it really is. The title screen at least looks okay, nothing bad about that. Granted, this whole setup makes it look like you're gonna be playing a horror game, and y'all will see, Dark Castle isn't really a horror game. It doesn't help that that song that's playing kinda reinforces this whole horror theme of the title screen here. Speaking of the music, this title only has one song in its entirety. Some of you folks may recognize this tune as Box Dakota and Fugue in D minor, which would be fine if it were like one of several other songs, but it's not. Oh, and by the way, it's on a continuous loop throughout the entire game. You do have the option to turn it off, but you have to do it while a note isn't playing or else said note will be sustained indefinitely. Don't believe me? Take a listen for yourself. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! Yep, that'd be a glitch if I ever heard one. This isn't even the tip of the iceberg, folks. It gets much worse from here on out. Okay, so our character is in this foyer, and we get to choose what door he goes behind. I think it's a good time for me to mention the narrative of this game. The dreaded Black Knight from Arthurian legend has been terrorizing the townspeople with a bunch of monsters and it's up to Prince Duncan to stop him. And that's the entire plot. Yeah, it's really short, but that's not what's bad about it. What makes the plot shitty is that it's so freaking simple. I mean, I get it. This was an early 90s platformer, and unless it were an RPG, the stories for many genres were not that in-depth back then. But come on, Revenge of Shinobi had a better plot, and that came up before Dark Castle. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the narrative is so bare-bones that I think it sucks. <laughs> but the narrative doesn't have shit on the player character of this game. Prince Duncan has got to be the lamest video game hero I've ever come across. Yes, worse than Jake Seaver, and worse than Lester. You want to know what makes him so sucky? Firstly, just look at him. Does this guy look like someone who would save a group of people? Hell no! He looks more like a dude who would be far better off tending to a flock of sheep. Look, I'm well aware that looks aren't everything, but it's not just Duncan's looks. It's what he does that makes him a fucked character. Unlike in a good platformer where a character won't get hurt if he jumps from a great height, you'll lose a life doing that with Duncan. He's also not a very sure-footed character either. He'll fall through platforms if you don't align him correctly, and he'll even sometimes trip over on himself and get dazed, leaving him completely open for an attack. Oh, and by the way, do you want to know how many hits it takes before Duncan goes down? One! If he touches an enemy or hazard even slightly, he's down for the count. Why did the devs have to make Duncan so fragile? Was it really too much to ask for a few extra hits? Christ, this is why this character fucking blows. He can't jump from too high without killing himself, he has a tendency to trip and fall everywhere, and he's got the constitution of a paper-thin sheet of glass. It's almost as if the devs wanted to make Duncan the worst video game hero ever. If that's the case, then bravo, developers. You succeeded. 
I should note that it was Artex Studios that handled this game, not Silicon Beach Software, the devs for the original Mac version. So to any of y'all who played the original game, know that my grievances in this review are directed towards Artek. Dark Castle happens to be a very challenging game, but it's challenging for all the wrong reasons. A good example of this is the platforming aspect. As I mentioned before, Duncan has to be aligned just right with a platform or he'll fall through it. This is especially a problem in one of the rooms where there are these horizontal moving platforms. Also, as I mentioned previously, there's that little problem of dying if you fall from too high. Basically, if you try shortcutting your way through this game's platforming, you're just going to have a hard time. Not that you already don't. It's as if the devs just didn't have a good grasp on the platformer genre. I mean, why else would the platforming be this horrible? It's kind of interesting, ironically, because Dark Castle was released in 1991, and that was the same year that Sonic 1 came out. Artek was working with a console that was more than capable of producing great platformers, so there's really no excuse for why they made Dark Castle's platforming such shit. But probably the crux of this game's difficulty is how it controls. To say that the controls for Dark Castle are broken would be an understatement. The controls for this game are crippled. No joke, they're freaking gimped out the ass. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that these are probably the worst controls I've come across thus far. Uh, for instance, down and up on the D-pad doesn't make you duck or look up like it would in a normal platformer. No, it moves Duncan's arms in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. More on that later. So you might be asking, how do you duck in this game? Well, you duck by pressing B. Yeah, you press B to freaking duck. Another action that's associated with the B button is picking up items. In any regular platformer, you simply have to touch an item to pick it up. But not in Dark Castle! Also, pressing B is not enough. You have to press down and B at the same time in order to pick up an item. It's fucking ridiculous. Jumping in this game is also an issue because you never jump straight up. Instead, Duncan jumps at an angle and it always moves him forward. You have absolutely no control over him when he jumps either, meaning if you don't plan out a jump ahead of time, you'll probably end up dead. The controls for Dark Castle are confusing as hell, and I think a lot of that has to do with a bad controller implementation on the devs end. You see, on the original Mac version, a keyboard and mouse was used to control Duncan. The Genesis only had a controller, and Dark Castle was never really designed to work with that kind of peripheral. I'm sure that the Mac game's controls are fine, but in this version, they're fucked. The controls, coupled with the poor platforming aspect, are what makes Dark Castle such a hard game to play. These are two things that should never be the contributing factors of what makes a platformer difficult. If you're making your game challenging by giving the players wonky controls and uh, shoddy main features, then you're doing it wrong. Looking at this game as is, I'm inclined to agree. You're not completely vulnerable, you do have a method of attack, but it all sucks in every way conceivable. You want to know what Duncan uses to defend himself in the beginning? Rocks. No, really! Rocks! Link has a sword, the Belmonts have a whip, Duncan uses rocks. What a freaking joke. They didn't make it easy to use those rocks either. Going back to the control issue again, in order to chuck a rock at an enemy, you have to painstakingly aim manually with your arms up or down with the D-pad, and then you press C to attack. In other words, you're kind of forced to look at the screen for a second or two, find where all the enemies hang out, aim Duncan's arms accordingly, and then you can defend yourself. This kind of formula works for games where strategy is involved, but platformers usually don't have those kinds of elements. 
They should never have made it this cumbersome to attack. It's bullshit. Duncan does get to use another kind of weapon, a flail, but he can only use it once, and it's only against one enemy. The flail doesn't even kill said enemy, by the way. It just stuns him. I would say that that's funny in an ironic sort of way, but to be honest with you folks, that actually kind of irritates me. The only other thing that I know of that you can use to defend yourself is a type of shield power-up, but fuck if I know how to use it. And that's it. That's all Duncan has at his disposal, and it's pathetic. You know, one little issue I noticed while playing this game is how friggin' slow it is. The Genesis was a fast console, and it was known for having fast-paced games, the Sonic series being the most well-known, but titles like Rocket Knight Adventures and Kid Chameleon were also pretty fast. Now, I know there were games like Shining Force and Fantasy Star 2, where it was required for you to take your time, but those were RPGs. Everything you do in Dark Castle is sluggish, and is done on the game's time, not yours. Nothing can be done fast in Dark Castle, everything has to be done at a tedious pace. It's all, how do you say, not fun. Playing this game is the equivalent of riding a giant tortoise. Sounds cool, but then you realize how lackadaisical the tortoise moves. Oh, and if you thought that that one song playing over and over again was annoying, take a listen to this shit. I have the game's music turned off, and yet my ears are still being violated. And this is not just on a couple screens, either. These aggravating sound effects are fucking everywhere, and there is absolutely no way to turn them off. I know I have the option to mute the TV, but come on! The sound effects shouldn't have to sound this atrocious. You got these one-eyed assholes constantly shouting, na 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 bats that are always screeching, and just listen to how Duncan sounds. Cause that's how you make a good game, by putting in ear-grating sound effects and making the players want to kill themselves. Nice. The only other game that I reviewed that had shitty sound effects like this was Hard Driven. However, I'm of the opinion that the sound effects here are way more worse than they ever could have been in Hard Driven. Oh, hey, Punk Rock Gamer. How you doing? No, 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 Dude, what are you trying to say? No, 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 no. That's better. What happened? You came in here and started going na 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 just like in the game I'm playing. It's like, you played Dark Castle before, right? Oh yeah, that game's horrible. Yeah, you were doing that s Did you play this while I wasn't in here? Yeah, I played it earlier. Well then, <laughs> and you didn't uh, drink before. No. Oh, I was sober again, wasn't I? You see, folks? The game is so bad that you have to drink, and if you don't, this is what happens to you. There's no easy way to say this. The graphics in this game are fugly. In fact, I'm gonna go on record here and say that these are the most hideous visuals I've ever seen for a Genesis title. How do you like that? Dark Castle couldn't even be pretty to look at. I've taken a look at what the Mac game looked like, and even though it's in black and white, it still looks better than this washed out nightmare. That just amazes me. The Genesis was a 16-bit console, and yet these graphics look like they're barely pushing 12 bits. 
Duncan looks all blocky, the bats and crows turn into what looks like a mound of poop when they're hit with a rock, and the colors. My god, the colors are washed out so bad that the game looks anemic. I know that graphics aren't everything, but this is just sickening to look at. And you want to know something? I'm sick of looking at it. Pfft, fuck it, I'm sick of playing it. Yeah. I'm done with this shit, folks. I know I usually try to beat a game when I'm reviewing it, but I just can't with this. And at the end of the day, I have nothing good to say about Dark Castle. Yep, nada zilch. This is without a doubt the worst game I've ever played on the Genesis, and it's a good contender for second worst game I've ever played in my life. The only other Genesis titles I can think of that at least come a bit close to Dark Castle's shittiness are Heavy Nova and The Immortal, but even then, I don't think those were as bad as this. Everything about Dark Castle is rotten. Artek essentially ate a game that was more or less meant only for computers and then shat it out as a console game. What really makes this title so awful for me is the fact that it was made on my favorite console. The Genesis had a lot of great games released for it, and it just pains me to see such a shit title being put on a good piece of hardware. Playing Dark Castle is less like playing a game, and more along the lines of taking a patience test. It's as if Artek were interested in just how much they could piss a gamer off. Well, I'll tell you all this, my tolerance has run thin, and if I never play this game again, it'll be too soon. So with that, I give Dark Castle an H for horrendous. The only way I'll ever play it again is if I decide to livestream on the side in the future. And even then, that's only if you folks really want me to. After playing it though, I think that the good folks watching deserve a review of an actual scary game. Well everyone, that's it for Shasta and I, but we'll be back. Halloween is upon us, and I think it's appropriate for me to cover a real spooky title. Goodbye folks, and y'all come back now, alright?